thanks so much for watching. This is the instructional video for the floating embroidery kit. If you don't have a kit, you can visit my website and I'll ship it directly to your door. I'm so excited to make something beautiful with you. Remember, if you guys have any questions, please leave the comments um, below and I will do my best to answer them and get to them as quickly as possible. So here we go. Um, this is kind of what your kit will come to you like. It'll be in this nice little bag. Let's just kind of scoot these away and unbox our kit here. Yay, you are awesome. Um, just a little note reminding you that, you know, you're learning some fresh new skills. So if you continue on with your new skills, please post them, um, tag us in them, follow us on social media. I'd love to see what you guys are creating because that's the one thing I'm really missing from doing these digital workshops is that I don't get to see your creations in person. So please post them and tag us. So we'll just set that aside. Pop this open and let's see what we got. I'm pretending like it's a surprise, but I already know it's in here because I made it for you. All right, we have our sheet with our design. So whatever design sheet you chose, um, there are four different options on that sheet. Um, today I'm gonna be doing one from the insect sheet because if you know me, you know that I love bugs. Um, so that'll be really fun. So you should have your design sheet. You should have your tool, two pieces of tool. Um, I put two in there because sometimes it's easy to accidentally um, damage one piece. So I wanted to give you a backup just in case. But if you don't end up using it as a backup, then keep it and when you go buy a different hoop, you can use it, um, use it again. So two pieces of tool. You should have your embroidery hoop here. That's what that is. A glue stick, yay. Uh, three colors of thread. You'll have more thread than this, but um, I included three colors because I thought that would be fun for you to decide where the colors go. We'll talk more about that when we get started on the actual project, but you should have three colors. And then your needle. Um, I really tried to make it so these wouldn't fall by the wayside or get lost in any way. So um, that little uh, plastic bag that looks empty does have an embroidery needle in the bottom of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. There we go. So there's that little needle. I'm gonna set that kind of off to the side with my thread. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the process is going to start the same no matter what design sheet you are going to be working from. First we need to stretch our embroidery, our fabric into our embroidery hoop. So if you look up here, there is this little kind of bolt that turns, you know, righty tidy, lefty loosey. So if you turn it toward you like that, it's going to loosen up that top toggle and then your inner hoop will come out. So you should have the inner hoop and the outer hoop. The outer hoop has that bolt on the top of it. And there is this kind of blue um, protective film on the metal. You can just peel that off. I don't know. I had somebody say in a workshop recently that she liked it. So I'm like, I don't care, then keep it. But um, if you want, it just peels off. It's kind of cumbersome to, to do, but you can do that at any point in the process when you're totally done with your piece too. So just throw that over there. All right, so even though you have two pieces of tool, we're just gonna use one. And if you see, they're nice and long. Um, this is because the tool, if you look really closely, it has like a mesh pattern to it. Um, and this mesh is a little far apart. So I want us to be able to have a little more tooth to grab onto. So that's why it's longer, because we're just gonna double it over. And then you'll see it's a little more, it has a little more strength, a little more tooth to it. Yeah, just gives us a little more to work with. So I'm gonna set my extra tool aside and just kind of work from here. So first things first, we take the inner hoop. So the hoop that doesn't have anything on it, just the wooden hoop is the interior one. Ooh, there we go. And I am just going to use this glue stick and I'm not being like careful at all. I think this goes back to my kindergarten days like so you teachers you know I was that student too much glue but really I'm not being careful I'm just really caking the outside with glue um, the glue sticks are purple but they dry clear so you can really see that you get some good coverage so don't be shy but just around that outside edge and cap the glue there we go so now I'm gonna lay that down 
on my surface, take my doubled tool, lay that on top, and take my exterior hoop here and push it over the top. So you might have to loosen it a little bit more to get it over the top. Um, and once it's over, you can kind of see that it's stretched so that the, the face of it is nice and smooth. Um, we are doing like a permanent embroidery hoop. Now normally with embroidery, if you were gonna be adding a design to a um, napkin or a like pillowcase or something, you would stretch it into this hoop and you would not do the glue because when you're done, you would just undo the hoop and take that piece out. But this is just a fun project that when you're finished, um, you know, it looks something like this so you can hang it on the wall, which is really fun. Um, and also the tool is kind of fragile, so it's nice to, to secure it in the hoop. So once I pop my exterior hoop on, I'm just gonna go ahead and start tightening that bolt again. And as I'm tightening it, I'm really trying to make sure that both of my hoops stay even with each other. So we don't want one hoop like you know, an eighth of an inch higher or lower than the other. We really wanna make sure they're even with each other. And I'm also pulling that tool all the way around because I really wanna stretch it like a drum. So don't pull too hard. This is where you can accidentally kind of like tear through the tool, which is why you have a backup piece. Um, but as you can see, you know, I'm just kind of pulling it and tightening and pulling and tightening, you know, but don't go crazy. I mean, I have a pretty strong hand, like a She-Hulk kind of grip, so um, I'm really trying to be careful and not like poke my finger. It's kind of like pantyhose, you know, you could like poke your finger right through it and rip it. So just be careful. And I'm gonna tighten it some more. And again, make sure our hoops are flat. And I really just wanna tighten this until I can't anymore. So some of you, just the way the hoops are made, you're bolt might be farther apart than mine, yours might actually touch. Um, it's not anyone being like stronger than anybody else, it's just kind of how they're made. So um, get it to where you can't tighten it anymore finger tight wise. Look at, ooh, I'm getting mine real close here. There we go. And so that's pretty good there. So you can see that this is nice and tight like a drum. Um, my hoops are even. So the front side is the side that has our tool on top. The backside would be kind of like the concave part of it where it has all this extra fabric kind of hanging there. So there we go, we are all stretched. And then before we get started, I really like to just take some scissors. Those weren't included in your kit, but hopefully you've got some scissors at home. Um, I hope you have scissors at home, my goodness. It's pretty, pretty basic. And I just like to go around the back and trim that up just so it's not going to get into our in our way so this floating embroidery is really cool um i learned it recently because i was in looking into the like see-through fabrics kind of like silk and organza but using the tool is a really affordable way to do that especially if you haven't done it before um then you don't have to you know waste money on expensive fabrics. The cool thing about tulle is that it comes in every color also. So we're just using white, but you can use whatever color you want. You could use like a black tulle and then use white thread or white stitching, that'd be super cool. Um, and then, I mean, it comes in like pinks and greens and all sorts of things. So I'm just trimming. Da, da, da. There we go, I'm gonna discard that over here. So you can see that I've trimmed all the way around and no, it's not perfect. I mean, depending on the kind of scissors you have and how quickly or slowly you go, you could probably get a little closer than I did. But, um, but by the time I finish and I hang it on a wall, you're never gonna see those little, little flyaways back there and they're not gonna be in our way when we start working too. So we are ready to transfer our image. I'm gonna move the scissors. Um, now I am using the insect image sheet, but there are, there were three options, which you already know. There was the really pretty floral sheet. There was the, the super cool geometric one, which I'm excited to see some people that create from that. And then the insect one. Um, the only thing when putting your image 
down is the placement of it and we'll talk about that in a second if you have the image sheet but you want to come up with your own that's totally cool i always recommend though drawing whatever picture you want onto um, a piece of white paper and you know what maybe use your hoop and trace out the circle so you know what size you need to stay within draw your image on and um, go from there all the steps are going to be the same no matter what your image is so if you want to start with one of the images I provided first, that's totally cool too, because we're going to make some really fun stuff. So, okay, so I'm going to work from the image, um, the insect image sheet, and I'm going to go ahead and do this moth down here. I love moths, and I know with my three colors, I can make it, you know, something super cool and unique. So, um, what we do is we are going to lay down our tool so that the tool is touching the paper. So face down, so that that concave part is facing up. We want the tool touching the paper. And then this is really where I, you can consider the toggle or the bolt at the top to be the top of your piece. If you're gonna hang it, it's really nice to like put a little loop of ribbon or however you will to hang it, but that will be the top. So if you want your moth to be flying like sideways, you can kind of twist and turn it. Um, but if you want it to be facing upward, you know, make sure that you've got the top in the right spot. Now with the, with the insects and the florals and the geometric patterns, there is a little bit of a trick. Even though this hoop is bigger than our image, and I'm gonna show you on this geometric pattern where the hoop is the actual size of the image, we really can't embroider all the way to the edge. So you're gonna wanna make sure that things are in a little bit from the edge. So with these, in, with these geometric patterns, um, you know, don't trace it all the way to the edge because it's super hard to get your thread in and out. Um, you know, and as you keep going with this kind of a skill, like you might get more comfortable with it, but, but for beginner's sake, we're gonna stay within about a quarter of an inch around the edge. So really that, that's the biggest um, issue with the geometric pattern that you need to stay within that circle there. All right, so the other tool that we need that wasn't provided in your packet was a um, Sharpie marker. Really any black marker um, or any color Sharpie I'm sure would work just fine, but I like the black Sharpie permanent markers because they're not gonna smudge or anything or smear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make my moth, I want him flying pretty straight up and down. And see how I'm just kind of moving it because I'm thinking about those tips of the wings there and staying into the embroidery hoop. You know, you could always too, you could add like a little something right here. If you wanted on your sheet, you could like add a little like, I don't know, firefly or a little star or, you know, have fun with it and use the designs as just a guideline, but really you don't have to stick to them at all. It's totally up to you. So I've got my tool facing down on the paper. I'm just gonna take my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna trace pretty freely just the outlines. I don't need to put like every single piece of detail in. You really just need the key parts that are gonna help you while you're working and you can always refer back to the sheet. So, you know, the least amount of Sharpie you can use, the the best, because then you're not really tied into these black lines that we have on the sheet. All right, so I'm gonna put his little antennas and I'm gonna be a little freer with it. Up, there's his little legs. All right, so I mean, I really, really was like just following outlines. If you wanna put more detail into your tracing piece, you totally can. Um, if that makes you feel a little more comfortable. I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see. Ta-da! There it is. He's on there. If you flip it over to the front, oh my God, it's like magic. You can see him on both sides, which is what we want. Super easy to transfer your image. Like I said, if you have your own drawing, um, it's a great way to transfer that too. The one little trick that is in here, if you've got the floral pattern and you wanna do your initial, it's, it's got to be backwards because if you're tracing it face down and you trace that initial and you flip it over, it will be backwards. So that's something that you could trace the image and then, you know, go ahead and put your initial on 
freehand. So then it's forward. You don't have to think about backward and forward. So um, like if you want to add any details, you know, to this, once you see what it looks like, you can totally do that. Add a little bit of the lines and the wings here. But other than that, that's going to give me un plenty to work with while we're actually embroidering. So we're done with the Sharpie now. Put that away. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these two pieces of paper here. And I really just wanna be able to kind of look at my original picture and I like to have the white of the paper um, so that I can see just to get started. So we are ready to start sewing, which is great. That gave our glue a little time to dry. And so our piece should feel nice and taut and ready to go. If you've never sewn before, don't worry about it. It's, this is really um, going to be a simple kind of introductory process. Um, if you have done embroidery before and you know some tricks of the trade and you feel like you want to comment below and post some things, please feel free. But this is mainly for people who have maybe never done this before or only done it maybe once or twice. Um, so. Our thread, I'm going to start with my darkest color, which is this nice like teal blue. There we go. Really pretty tealy blue. Um, this is a six strand embroidery floss. And what that means is that the thread is actually made up of six separate little strands here. Again, if you are into embroidery, um, <laughs> you might pull the threads apart and use smaller bits of them. So. I follow some people on Instagram who are freaking awesome and they embroider with single strands of embroidery floss, which is like bonkers to me to think about, but their designs are beautiful. It just takes a lot longer. So for the sake of the video and um, of us all being beginners together, we're gonna keep the strand whole. But like I said, this is, I am in no way controlling your creative process. So if you wanna pull them apart and try parts of it um, in different colors, feel free to do that. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep this whole and a way that I like to kind of measure out a piece of thread, I don't want you to have to use the whole thing at once because it can be a little cumbersome when we're sewing. So I like to take this, the tip of the thread and I'm gonna put it on my nose, which you can't see, ha ha and stretch out my hand to my middle fingers like that. And I'm just gonna cut that off. Doop, like that. So you will have gobs of extra thread with this. I wanted to make sure you had plenty. Um, you don't have to change colors if you don't want to. You can do the entire thing in one color or you can change colors as many times as you want. It's completely up to you, but that's a good length to work with so that we're not accidentally getting like knots when we're tying, you'll see. All right, so the one end, I want to tie a knot. So I like to lick it. I know this is like coronavirus time, so if you wanna just have a little um, dish of water and just dip your fingers in it and kind of you know, wet that, then that's totally fine too. Um, but just to get it so it's, it's a little bit moist on the end, and go ahead and just tie a knot, pretty basic. Um, loop knot there and I like to really pull it with my fingernails like that so I've got a tight little knot I'm gonna go ahead and knot it again and I want it to go right on top of that knot so you can see I'm just making that loop pulling it through and then as I'm tightening the knot I'm kind of controlling where I want it to go yay it worked on camera I'm so glad okay so there's my double knot. Again, nice and super, super tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and take those scissors and just like cut the tip off there, like that. So we've got a nice tight knot close to the edge on the one end of our thread. The other end of our thread, again, maybe dip your fingers in some water and, and wet it. Um, I'm just gonna lick it. All right. And we're gonna feed that through the needle head. So the head of the needle has that, that nice hole in it. These are a little larger than normal embroidery needles, but since we have this like large mesh with the tool and we're keeping the thread whole, I thought it would be really um, appropriate for today. And it's much easier, as you can see, to thread your needle. So I just like to thread the needle. 
Like I said, you might have to um, moisten that end and flatten it a little bit to really get it through the needle head. Um, and then I like to pull it about four inches beyond the needle and just kind of let that dangle. So you've got the needle on one end and we've got our other end with our double knot and we're ready to start stitching. Yay, oh my gosh, this is where it comes together. So I know that these drawings or these designs are black and white. Um, like I said, you can do the entire thing in one color if you want. There's plenty of thread for you to do that. Or you can switch colors in between. We're gonna go over how to do it. So don't feel intimidated at all. Um, since I'm starting with the darker part, I'm gonna start kind of with the top of his body. Like, you know, moths have like fuzzy fur on this part of their body, which I really love. So I'm gonna kind of emulate that in what I'm doing. Um, but again, all of these processes are the same for no matter which sheet you have. You can do any of these stitching techniques. Um, yeah, and I really can't wait to see you guys share what you're making because, uh, again, I really miss seeing you face to face. It's so weird to be sitting here doing this by myself. My dog's listening and she's sleeping and she doesn't care. So, um, all right, I've got the middle of my moth's head right here and I'm just gonna come through from the back to the front and pull it all the way through. This is where if you're not as too small, it'll pop right through. Don't worry, just go ahead and make another knot on there. Um, and really, we wanna be pulling things tight, but we don't wanna like rear on it. Like I said, that tool is, is a little um, fragile, so don't like, I mean, you could pull it all the way through if you wanted to and rip it. Um, but we don't wanna do that, cause we're gonna make something fun. Um, so I'm gonna turn it upside down cause I'm gonna do those neat little like furry bits. And so I'm just gonna take my needle and go off to the side like he's got a piece of fur here. Let's go right there and pull it through. Oh my gosh, we got one stitch. So I'm gonna come back to where, about where I was um, on his head and complete the stitch. So we've got a stitch on the front that goes through the back. So a super tricksy part with this floating embroidery, it looks so, so cool because it's the images are just floating there. But unlike in regular embroidery, the back has to look about just as good as the front. We can't be skipping around making different stitches. We really have to follow our lines and kind of stick to the pattern or else the back stitches will show on the front. And you'll see what I mean as we keep going. Um, but don't fret, don't fret. It is such a cool, fun process. It's, it's not gonna be any harder, so. Okay, so I've got the one stitch making his little fur, so I'm just gonna keep going out from like that starting point that I have. And now you can use this kind of a technique to fill in any sorts of, um, leaf patterns in those really pretty floral patterns or you can um, use them on the straight lines of the geometric pattern. I'm going to show you more of like a chain sort of stitch uh, in a little bit and that'll be good for all sorts of things too. So I'm kind of continuing just to go back to that starting point because I really want it to look like his fur is just like from his head. I don't know why he's a boy. I made him a boy in my head just automatically. So it could be a girl moth, who knows? All right. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. All right, so see how it's kind of nice that this thread isn't, you know, like three yards long because <laughs> it could get really, uh, really sticky really quickly. If you're noticing like when I'm doing this and pulling, the thread can easily like loop itself it's about to do it ah, like that around this little toggle. That's totally okay. Just pull it a little looser, unloop it, um, but just be mindful of what you're doing. You don't have to go fast. This isn't meant to go quickly. We are all stuck in our houses for quite a while, so take your time. Um, you know, don't feel rushed at all. So now you can see too that when thinking about pulling apart this thread into thinner pieces. Like you can see how thick our piece is. If I had it 
maybe three strands thick, it would be half that width, but I'd have to do maybe double the amount of stitching um, or more to make up for it. So it really lends itself to like very delicate designs if you do end up pulling your, um, your thread apart. A lot of old, old school hand embroidery is done that way where it's just very, very delicate. It's beautiful. And it's really fun that this is a technique that's coming back because it just is so cool. Okay, so I've kind of completed, for the sake of the video, his, um, his this uh, androgynous now moth's uh, fur. So I'm coming back up to the top, through the back, right up to the top of his head again, just like that. So you can see that the backside looks pretty darn good, like the front. So nothing, um, nothing's gonna show through when we hang it on our wall, it's gonna look nice and clean. I wanna show you a really fun little technique called a French knot um, that is gonna, I'm gonna use for his head here. And it's really, really cool. I'll show it to you on one of the floral patterns that we made. You can see it gives like this neat texture in the center of this pretty little flower. And they actually look like little, like balls of fabric, little knots. So I. We did some on that one. Also, is this is a work in progress, but you can see in the center, it's a really great way to like take up space with a color, but then also add some texture to it, and it just looks so cute. It's kind of like shag carpeting, um, and you can incorporate that into any of the designs too. Even the geometric ones, maybe where the patterns meet each other, you do a little French knot. But on our moth, I'm gonna do some French knots right at his head there show you how to do them they are so easy and like I said they just add a whole nother element of texture to your piece which is really really fun so watch me closely I've got my needle I've got it it's through the front of my piece instead of just going back through to the back like a normal stitch I'm gonna take this end and I'm just gonna wrap it around the end of the needle just like that let me do that again for you. So I did it three times. You can do it less than that. You can do it more than that. Um, it's up to you. It depends on how big you want that knot to be, but three times is usually pretty satisfactory for me. So I've got it three times. Now I'm gonna take the needle and put it through as if I were just doing a stitch. so cute cute little French knot there so like I said super easy it takes up a lot of space I'm gonna do three for his head so I'm gonna come over here to do like his other eye maybe like his eyeball and again I want it to match so I'm gonna wrap it one two three times around the only thing is you have to make sure you're not gonna go back through that same hole that you went through to come to the front because that'll just pull your stitch right out which if that happens it's fine you just do it over again I like to pull these nice and slow too so they don't get an extra knot Ooh! oh my goodness yay okay let me do another one here I come again through to the front this is a really really fun way if you have like a super open space oh my gosh like on this beetle Maybe instead of doing the pattern in there, you do just solid French knots. That would be super cute. Or even on the floral sheet, um, there are all these little ball, like billy ball kind of things, you know? Um, because I love those billy balls. I think those are so fun. If you haven't visited one of the um, floral trucks, they uh, often have them and they're just really neat. So you could fill that entire thing in with French knots and it would have that cool texture to it be really fun okay so let me do my third French knot on my moth again I'm wrapping it three times and I'm going straight through to the back there we go so you see his head he's got like three little bloops there which is super cute all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and do his um, his legs uh, in the picture you see there are antennas because moths have these really cool fuzzy long antennas, but he's got two front legs sticking out and I'm gonna want those to be blue or this teal also. So 
I am right now at the top of his head and I wanna come over, I'm right here, I wanna come over here to do that foot. So I'm just gonna bring it that direction on the back side. Come right through to the front, just like that. So with his legs, um, I'm just gonna kind of do a very simple stitch as if you were like mending uh, something with your clothes. I'm gonna go through to the back. There's one stitch. Now I'm gonna come back through to the front. I'm kind of following my Sharpie line. I know it's probably hard to see in the video. Um, these are super low budget videos, but hey, it's working, I think. Um, and I'm gonna make his feet a little bit longer than I anticipated, so I'm gonna go a little farther. So through to the front, or through to the back. And if you look really closely, you'll see that you've just kind of done a stitch like this. And that means the tool is on top of part of the stitch. So we're gonna just turn ourselves around now and go back the opposite that we came. So the stitch that I just did is on the top. So I'm gonna bring this through just like that from the bottom. And remember, pull it taut, but don't pull it crazy tight. And now I'm just gonna cover up that tiny piece where the tool is on the top, go through the other one, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna come back to kind of the center of his head too. So there's one leg. Now I know that was probably hard to see, but remember when you're sewing um, a piece of clothing that you're just mending by hand, um, often people will take their needle and thread and they go through it like this. And then when we get to the other end, we're gonna come back through like that, oh, like that. So we're kind of doing this to where the thread is all, it's covering up all of our surface on the front and the back. And what that does is it really allows us to go out to certain points and return to our origin without showing those like ugly stitches on the back where we would maybe just cut over to his foot. No, we're gonna go straight out, straight back, out, back, out, back. We really wanna make it so that, again, the backside looks pretty similar to the front. All right, I know this is a ton of info, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do his other foot, or leg, or whatever. Da, da, da. Go out. And again, I made it a little bit longer than what I'd drawn it originally and now again I'm coming out of the front you can see that there is some tool here so now I'm gonna go right back through that thread and pull it through so we've got a nice clean line you can do as long or as short of stitches as you want um, I'm a fan of super short tiny stitches because they make it look really really detailed um, but I'm doing kind of a stitch that's about an eighth of an inch in length if you wanted to do crazy long ones like maybe on this um, on this uh, geometric pattern and kind of make this like one solid stitch you can do that too it's really this is really up to you um, I'm just trying to give you the tools to get started, but really letting your mind kind of go with it because that's that's what it's all about. And your all of our poor minds right now, we really need something uh, to focus on other than what's going on in the world around us. So, okay, so I've done his little feet. Now I'm gonna go off and do the tops of the wings, and then I think I'm gonna switch colors. So, again, I'm gonna do the tops of the wings. That one kind of line there similarly how I did the legs so I'm gonna just do some stitches that are about an eighth of an inch it's so weird to hold things this direction so I'm really trying to do a good job at showing you at different angles um, but it's really hard my arms are like super outstretched and I wish you could see my setup because it's like hilarious and ridiculous I will try to take a picture and post it um, For you Because again never done this so we're just playing around here Okay, I'm gonna go just to the end of the wing like right there all right, so again 
I can see that some of my thread is on top of the tool and some of the tool is on top of the thread. So I'm gonna come back the opposite, opposite way. Bear with me while I have to tilt this so I can see it a little bit better. Coming, coming, coming. All right. Then I'll show you how to switch colors, knot it off and change colors, and then you are gonna be like, let loose into the embroidering world. All right, so I'm back there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and come over to the other side. And I'm gonna follow that line out. This one I might do, try to do a little bit faster so you're not so bored with me. And the quiet that is my studio at the moment. All right, see this is kind of where if my design were closer to the edge of that hoop, it would be really hard to kind of get the needle in and out. So um, again, you really wanna keep your design kind of within a quarter of an inch of the inside of the hoop. Um, but that's something too that you'll learn with time. Like I've seen people who have done kind of crazy things all the way to the edge. I mean, good for them, but that's just not where I'm at right now in my process. And I'm just gonna be happy with where I'm at and enjoy doing this. This is something that's so great. Once you kind of get the basics of it, like we just did how to stretch the fabric, how to transfer an image um, and just get started and switching colors. This is something that's so fun to do while you're sitting around, even if you're watching TV. Like, I love my Netflix just as much as everybody else, but I also have like this weird guilt about not accomplishing anything when I'm watching TV. So um, this helps with that. Okay, so now I'm back to the beginning. You can kind of see, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm back to his body. So I wanna bring this over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and loop underneath one of those threads, not even all the way to the front, just, just right underneath it to bring it to the center where I'm protected. Cause if you see on the front, if I tie a knot where I'm at, you won't be able to see it. But if I were over here, you might be able to see that knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and knot it in the middle of his body. And I do a very simple technique similar to what you do when you're mending clothes again. Um, I'm just gonna go pick a thread next to it, just pick a very close stitch, and go underneath it. And see as I'm pulling, it's making this, like, this loop. I'm gonna go through the back side of the loop. And sometimes it helps to hold it down on the table. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it nice and tight. Now this is where if you're like, you can rip right through your tool, rip your piece right out. Um, if that happens, I gave you that backup, so there you go. But um, really just try to use, I, I like to use, look at that tiny little fingernail, teeny tiny fingernails, but still gets the job done. And I pull the knot, the knot nice and close to the edge. If you're not confident with that knot, go ahead and just do it again. You know, we're protected. We're in this nice area that's not gonna show up. So go ahead and pick another stitch to go under. Pull it nice and slow. Make that loop and go through the back of the loop. And then we can pull it tighter again. So I'm gonna pull it nice and tight with my fingernail. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it close to the knot. And then I'm gonna take my fancy off-brand glue stick and I'm just gonna like dab a gloopy, look at that, I told you that I was that kid in kindergarten. There we go. I just dabbed a gloop of glue right onto the knot. It's gonna dry clear and look at this, you cannot see it from the front side. So this is kind of the goal. We really want our knots to be hidden, um, but I like to just dab them with the glue just in case. It's really not necessary because these aren't even pieces of clothing that we're like gonna get a lot of wear and tear. They're gonna hang on your wall or sit on your desk. So um, yeah, so I like to have that glue handy so I can just do the knotting. Um, so I'm gonna switch colors now and kind of go from there. Uh, I showed you how to end the color and now the next color we're gonna begin Oh, see, and that's not a lot of waste there. So 
I'm glad I cut off a piece of that so I didn't waste it. I'm gonna do this crazy orange. I love it so much. So you'll have different colors than me. Um, everybody's colors will be different, uh, which is why I really want you to post pictures and tag me in them of your final outcomes because I just cannot wait to see what you're gonna make. So um, I'm gonna start this again the same way. If you want to go ahead and use that water, dip your fingers, wet the end of this, and then tie a knot on the end and you know use those fingernails I'm gonna go ahead and knot it again just like before this is something too that if you're like really struggling with it then just practice practice makes perfect you know okay so I've got that knot there I'm gonna go ahead and snip that off because that can get in our get in our way a little bit there we go, and I'm gonna thread the other end of the needle. That's where it really is helpful to um, like wet it a little bit, or you know, if you're feeling brave enough and you wanna lick the end too, that's totally fine, but um, yeah, I, maybe in this climate that we're in right now, I would recommend having like a little dish of water, like I said, and go ahead and pull it through about four inches. So, so there we are, we have our other piece. Now this was just a short piece that I had, but I would recommend measuring it out like what I showed you before. Holding one end to your nose and stretching your arms out to your middle fingers as far as you can. Um, that gives you about three feet, depending on how crazy long your arms are or how short your arms are. But it just gives a nice length to work with that you won't feel like you're wasting too much when you're done. And um, if you run out, you just knot it like I showed you and just start again with another color, but it won't get in your way while you're working. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the antennas. Um, these cool little fuzzy antennas that moths have, I'm going to do those in orange because I really like how the orange and blue, orange and teal kind of like work together. So again, I'm just going to come from the back through to the front. And now that I have all this information already here, it gives me lots of places to hide my knots, which is really nice. And I'm gonna start by doing that straight out and straight back kind of stitch with his antennas. You know what, the great thing about this tool is that the, um, like the mesh and the holes are big enough that you can do multiple stitches through one hole so if you get lost and you're like whoa what the heck now where do I go just backtrack it and go go back to your origin and knot it off and start again like really is a super super forgiving material to work with once you kind of get beyond the fact that it can be a little bit fragile all right boom boom look at that so he's got just the straight antenna but I want to add some little like um, furry fuzzies because I, I love, I mean, if you know me at all, you know I love moths and um, yeah, I just love transformative creatures. All right, so what I did was, I'm sorry, I'm gonna undo that. If you do a stitch where you're like, oh shoot, I do not wanna be there, just look really, really closely at your tool and go right back through the same hole. We'll see if I just did it properly and it pulls your stitch right out. So you can, you can undo what you did. Just make sure you go nice and slow and take your time. So since I wanna come off of this uh, line a little bit, I am going to come out here just like that. And now I'm gonna go back to that main orange line. Oh, see, there's a little tiny uh, flyaway fuzzy. So now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go out a little bit to create another one. And back down again. So I'm interested to see how you guys work with the designs because I this is what I love about when I do workshops. I don't give everyone the same designs. I don't like the whole kind of idea to have everyone make the same thing because I don't feel like you really learn about the process that much that way. So I want you to figure some things out for yourself and that makes it so much more rewarding and it gives you more confidence to continue on with this. If you're you know, running out to the store to buy some groceries, you um, can pick up an embroidery hoop and take it home and you've got the skills 
to start your own design. There are tons of patterns online that you can download, but again, you can just draw an image or you could trace an image off of a card maybe you have at home. Um, options galore because you now know how to do it. Yay, look at that, cute little fuzzy. So again, I'm gonna come all the way back to where I was to his head and then I'm gonna go off on the other side. So now I'm gonna come over here and do that stitch. Go out to the tip of the antenna and then come straight back. Now we're like, now we're on a roll. I mean, this is where crank the music and just go for it. It's super fun. It's so meditative too, because you're thinking about it, but it's not like a stressful kind of thinking about it, especially in the comfort of your own home. I mean, really, I love in-person workshops so much because I love the interaction that everybody has while they're creating something. But if you're like a little nervous about trying something new, what a great way to figure out if you like something or not is just by doing it in your house. I gotta tell you though, I cannot wait to have people back in my studio again. All right, so I'm doing what I, exactly what I did before. I'm just continually going back to my origin point. Don't forget about those French knots because those are seriously like the easiest, cutest little things that you can add. I love the idea of adding them to the insects too because I think they're really um, fun. And again, they have that neat texture that, um, that we see in things in nature. All right, see how I go back to my origin? And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to bring it again back to that center part where I've got a lot of information to be able to hide my knot. So now you can really see with the orange against the teal kind of how I'm gonna knot it. So I'm gonna go to a stitch right next to it and I'm just going underneath it. So see, I just picked up that back part. I'm not going through the front, just picking up the back stitch, going underneath it, pulling very slowly to create that loop and then go through the back side of the loop. So it has nothing to do with the front of our piece at all. We're just keeping it on the back. So I pulled it nice and tight with my fingernail, but again, if you want to, because if you're feeling a little like not confident with that, then go ahead and just knot it again. Just like what I'm doing. There's my loop. Go through. Ta-da! Oh my goodness, okay. Pull it tight with my fingernail. Trim it nice and close. And again, because I'm a sucker for the glue, just glue that puppy up because that will dry nice and clear. And look at that, we're on our way. So he's coming together. Um, I feel pretty confident now that you've got a couple of ways of stitching down. This is the final piece that I made last night. Um, doing the exact same techniques that I just talked about. So you can see I really left some of the tool in the design to show through because it has that cool texture like the wings of an insect, so it worked perfectly with that. Um, it works really well with all the designs, even if you just wanna follow the outline and not really do a lot of interior work. That's, that's cool. Again, this is yours, something that you're working on, you're coming up with. I'm just helping you get started. Um, and really like helping open that door for you. So, so there's the final product that I made. You can see the backside, look at all my knots. Oh my goodness, OMG. And it's got a, just a big old gob of dried glue there, but hey, can't tell it all from the front. So that's kind of what it's all about. Smoke and mirrors, right? We're hiding things on the back just so that they don't show through on the front, but we're on our way with it. So, now that you know some basics, I'm gonna let you turn you loose. You've got your colors. You know you can switch as many times as you need to, um, or you can stay with one color, whatever you're comfortable with, but just have fun with it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your time with me, and I especially hope you're happy with your new embroidery piece. Um, remember, follow me on social media. 
I'm gonna be posting more workshops in the coming weeks, so lots of more fun things to make in the comfort of your home. Um, and please, 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 please take pictures and post them and tag me in them because again, that's what I'm really, really missing is seeing what you are making. So I wanna see your pieces um, and yeah, I'm super excited to see that. So thank you guys again so, so much. Um, please comment below if you have questions and I will get to them as quickly as I can. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I love you guys. Bye-bye.